And I guess a similar question with those two, in particular, chilling it, um, as like I asked about one four is, uh, you know, that was just as say chill and wombat were really starting to pop off. Fast forward the clock to now, both of them, but I guess in particular chilling it, yeah, um, have become really successful. And chill in particular is like a phenomenon. Yeah, and he's you know debatably the biggest rapper in the country or whatnot. Now, as someone who worked with him a bit earlier on, uh, again, same sort of question. What is it, what do you think it is about Chill that has got him that level of success that he's got now? Um, I think just targeting a market that was always there just wasn't highly saturated um and i think it just runs coincide with the one four boys running an australian rap man you know like if you look back at the old hustle hard days man chill was young he could always he could always rhyme bro and he was always that kid that had bars and metaphors and you know a very upfront metaphor rapper very quirky um you know from a mc point he's not over the point lyrical but he's very lyrical in a point of a, of a fan which makes them engage so well um and that's what he nails, you know, that big L. I know he said my, my big L is his favorite MC. Um, those those really in-your-face punchlines that hit you. Um, and the average listener go, whoa, this guy's great. Um, and I think he nailed that. I also think he nailed the 420 family shit. Because it's Australia, right? We know how much people smoke marijuana. Um, and that party boy lifestyle. That was never... It's funny because he come up through... You know, I'll, I'll tell you something about what I realized about Chill. Um... My partner was a big Bliss and SO fan growing up, and obviously I come from a bit of a different environment. Um, she's a coasty girl, so she was playing some Bliss and SO one day, and I thought to myself, this is where, you know, because Chill come up through Hustle Hard, so he had that sort of street sort of image around him, smoking cones, and I heard Bliss and SO stuff, and I thought, that cadence, that 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 roll of the cadence, attacking the, the number one, you know, that, that downbeat, and then rolling off in the snare, this is where Chill was getting... It was like, a, it was like you know, because we're all influenced, right? And I'm sure he would say the same thing. Um, and I heard that he was like that hybrid, and I think he still is, between, I guess... You wouldn't say Chill's a street dude, and he wouldn't say that either. But he's a stoner. He loves a party. He wears his fucking naughty car. He wears his Sydney fashion. But he makes music for the, for the, for the kid that lives in housing commission to relate to, Right? punching cones all day whatever they're doing but he also makes music relatable to this and so hilltop hoods and yeah he's almost he's almost he's just nailed it bro he just his image um and yeah just that whole 420 family man we know how many people you know i don't smoke but bar like every second person does right so yeah i think he just saturated a market that was there yeah. and, and then same thing bro great timing but you know no doubt only talent and hard work you know, no, no, you can't take it away from any of these boys that are where they're at. They're being consistent, um, you know, and their talent shows. So, yeah, I'd, I, I'd say the same thing. Bit of timing, uh, the way he markets himself, you know, what his persona is and who he identifies as, you know, so relatable to kids out there or even adults, you know. Like, people say to me, I'll make this record, but I don't smoke, I don't drink, I don't party. I'm in bed before 8 o'clock. I'm making music for the bloke that's getting up at 4 p.m. to go to the gym. Do you know what I mean? Five, ten years ago, I'm making kid for the person trying to make it out of the environment. So, like, there's no point me getting on a record saying, yeah, let's, th- let's bang some lines and, you know, root some girls and, and smoke some marijuana because it's not me. I wouldn't be true to myself. Um, but, yeah, like, obviously, we know Chill and, yeah, but, you know, he, um, I think he nailed it. But, yeah, another one of those dudes, man, like, just, yeah, same thing. He, when he come down that show, nothing but love, bro, for us um, because we show it back. You know what I mean? It's and it's another one of those dudes. I could bump into out here tomorrow, and he'd show me. He treat me the same way. There's no, you know, there's no ego of like that. So, and I think that's that's what life's about, right? And having these relationships with people that um stay the same, and that shows you who are pure, you know, and who's not. Yeah, man. Shout outs to Chill. Um, and I guess fast forwarding the clock to now, you know, you've got the you got the new mixtape. Yep. You got a, a few songs off that you've got clips for on YouTube. Yep. Um, 
you know, you mentioned that you're looking at putting on some shows in the future. What, yeah, what, I guess, what can you talk about that you've got planned for the future musically? Uh, musically, man, I've, man, I've, I've got, I've probably got 50 to 100 joints sitting on my computer, you know what I mean? Um, and I've got some records there. You know, Sesk is always at me about releasing music, but for me, I'm very pedantic about how things happen. Um, and I believe that, you know, time, you know, is really irrelevant when it comes to making music. Um, I've got records that I wrote five, six years ago, bro. I'm telling you, I'll drop tomorrow and it's, it's album quality. It's a classic. Um, and I think the best music's timeless for me. Um, so yeah, I've, I've got a shit ton of material. I've probably got another two, three tapes ready to go that are probably, you know, in fully written. They just need the recording process. Um, I'm going to continue to drop visuals off the Revival mixtape, which I just dropped, because, like I said to a few people before, um, I find that these days we, um, we hear with our eyes. We have to visually represent, right? Which is painful for me as an MC, um, because I'm so old school, and um, I want to paint pictures in your head. You know what I mean? I want to paint the thing for you, but it's backwards. So we do that, um, but I also love that cinema photography sort of vibe and, and, and creating art visually as well. So heaps more clips, um, yeah, a heap of music, and really just me yeah, more focused on my own music, man, and my own growth and um, other avenues. Um, and as for the shows, I mean, anything can happen. Um, I've, 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 I've done it before. We just got to put the word out and, and see who's who wants to get down and, and, and put some shows on, whether it's just us and ourselves or whether I manage some shows without me on it. Because I know there's, there's a few artists that are popping around that probably should be more active doing shows. Not probably, should be. Um, and they're, you know, um, just don't have the skill set or uh, understand the business and need that help, um, which I'd like to obviously help out. Um, you know, so, yeah, I, I think sky's the limit um, for... Aussie rap man, and then you know, or hip hop in the next few years. But for me, I'm just really focused on putting out quality music. Um, I, I did that with this last mixtape. I was quite pedantic. Um, there's a few things that add up on it. Revival was based upon a rebirth. Um, it's got a few snippets of a movie called Constantine uh, with Keanu Reeves. He's a um, a seer who sort of uh, commits suicide and, and spends the rest of his life um, putting demons back in hell to try and get you know into the graces of, of God and heaven. And I think that's um, quite resonating with my own life and other people out there that I um, went for a lot of hell and fought a lot of demons and I've had to um, you know in that rise clip I sort of dropped a hint that I've, I've buried the old version of me and you know when you go for hell you've got to kill the old version of yourself and rebirth this new one um, and you know that rise track stands for uh, rev revive inner soul's energy and like I spoke to you, know, you about before is just getting back to your pure form I'm um, enjoying life enjoying music um, yeah, and that, that Revival mixtape, I, I set it up. Uh, I dropped a track called Crossover in March, which dropped March the 5th. Um, then Rise dropped December 5th, which was you know, exactly nine months, which represents the, the rebirth of, you know, or birth of life in, in a human body. Um, so, yeah, I'm very pedantic at the point in my life. Um, I dropped the Rise clip three days later. Um, obviously, if, if people follow Christianity, that, you know, took Jesus three days to resurrect. Um, yeah, and I'm very pedantic like that and then I dropped the mixtape seven days later which we all know God took seven days to create the earth so I really want to keep that um, content that's what the mixtape is to me it's the same sort of um, same sort of whole rebirth finding yourself healing yourself you know going through hell battling demons coming out the other side um, and not caring what anyone thinks man just be happy so that's yeah that's where I'm at musically I'm probably really, I'm back almost to the point when I first fell in love with hip hop where I'm just writing daily, bro. I'm just, my pen's just going crazy. And for a good period from probably 2010 to 2020, my pen wasn't like that because I, maybe I didn't, maybe I didn't love it. I was so caught up in other shit, you know, where now I'm just, you want a 16? Boom, there it is. Um, and I feel like I'm in a good creative space and I'm, I'm finally in a position for my life um, to put some music out there. The, the, the lesson. Oh, yeah.